Don't ball in the green. All right, we want to know, you know can I stop that ball in the green? Or we're going to the US Open, maybe we want to get the dynamic off more up and a little bit quicker stopping action, but I thought that was pretty interesting. Okay, so we're not all teaching tour players. We're not all teaching really good junior players all the time, right? These are the these are the, the members that we're teaching, we're trying to help that are going to uh, help us make a living at this game. All right, so here's here, here's what's 15 six to the left club path in the center looks like. And this is one of my favorite members. He uh, he would kill me if he knew I was showing swing right now. <laughs> but uh, he kind of picked himself up, didn't he? <laughs> There's not a, I mean, you know, you got to put that up there for a seminar. But um, so yeah, that, you can see you know all the stuff that we that we love to see that club going way inside, lifting, coming over, waist back, and head back, and left foot off the ground. Pretty sweet. I think, let it, let it run there. I think I had a, uh, yeah, we have a teach chopper, but I like call chopper. Not to, not to remember space and things. Yeah, there we go. I just put up a little bit of the after so you can see that I actually changed a little bit. So there's 1.7. So that was, that's not bad. If you can change your students 14 degrees in one lesson, <laughs> you may have a job tomorrow. There you go, a little better. Use the exter external cue. If you didn't do it, I'm just smacking with it. <laughs> Doesn't hurt. I'm kidding. But yeah, that's it. That's uh, this is what we're dealing with. Mr. McKnight, he looks like Mike Shanahan. That's what Luke said. My last assistant. I thought he was pretty, he was pretty good. Pretty good resemblance to Mike Shanahan. Great guy. All right, reality too. So. Fiction driver, right? They all want to hit the driver better. This is what 17.6 to the left looks like with the driver. That's kind of cool. You can put up these lines through the track manager. This is the blue line is the, is the path. And this tells you, once again, getting the club face square doesn't always mean the result's going to be good, right? That ball went about 100 degrees to the right. 100 yards to the right. So this would be this would be probably my typical screen that I would put up for a, for a, for a typical lesson. Okay, I just want to know club path, face, attack angle, swing direction, maybe swing plane. I don't always put that up there, and then I want to know how far the ball went. That's pretty much basic. I don't put all that other stuff up there unless I'm I'll click back and forth occasionally if I want to look at dynamic loft or height or whatever. But typically, this is all I'm going to show. Up, right, so. When, just so I, you understand sort of how I blend it in, once I've done the interview, we set, we set the goal for the, for the day or the, uh, for the game, I'll have them hit a lot of shots and get some data, and I'll sit them down. And it's nice to have video to go along with the numbers. I think that's cool. You don't have to. If I had to pick one of the two, I'd take this. I can see what's going on. I don't need the video. I, that's more for their benefit. I want to know, know what's happening in collision. So I'll sit them down and I'll, I'll help, help them to understand deep planes. So, okay, club path face angle, attack angle, really quick. I might draw it out on a piece of paper just so they understand. I always help so they can play along when I do the changes. They start to see the change, whatever we're working on. They're gonna, that's what's going to help them increase the feel. All right, so one thing we haven't mentioned is what? You've got to hit the ball in the center of the face. <coughs> Or these numbers mean nothing. As I said, deep plane fantasy world. Deep plane, deep plane does, has no bearing when you hit the ball with the toe or the heel, the bottom of the club, or the top of the club. So gear effect is a very, very important aspect. Okay? And this is stuff you can do without a track man. Okay? This costs you a couple bucks at, at Rite Aid, uh, Dr. Scholl's Odor X. We can't find it at, in Charlotte. I don't know who else is teaching with uh, Dr. Scholl. A lot of our students are going out and getting it now. But, Spray the face. I never do a, dr a driver lesson or a driver fitting without spraying the face. And sometimes I'll spray the, the iron too because that's uh, it's that important. Yeah. Even before I got track man, even years ago, I started kind of figuring this stuff out. The strike point was very, very important. 
I have swings that look like that ball's got to draw. It definitely comes from the inside. Face is in a nice position. Next thing, another ball going to the right. Okay, the guy's too close to the ball, or he's humping it and throwing the club out, or whatever. Start spraying the face. Next thing you know, strike points are in the heel. Right. So just understand that, and we all probably know this from doing a lot of fittings. Is heel strikes are going to tend to curve to the right. It's supposed to help the golfer. Okay. Toe, toe strikes are going to curve back to the left. So, heel strikes are not very good, with the exception of maybe the, the occasional tour player that hooks it too much. I have some tour players that hit it slightly in the heel, it's great. And it keeps the ball from hooking too much. But for the average player, you're going to, you're going to, it's going to kill their distance, the ball's going to go to the right, and they're going to hate it. So, I spend a lot of time getting people away from the golf ball. <coughs> One of the things that I show him, this is something I got from a friend of mine, Tom Stickney, that he, uh, he told a story at one of the seminars I was at. He said, he uh, came up on a guy, the guy was hitting the ball, and he said, uh, how are you hitting him? He said, man, I'm striking him. And I'm hitting him really good. And he said, well, we spray this on the face. And that's what he got. <laughs> and he's like, man, keep going. You're doing great. <laughs> and it was just like, yeah, seriously? Yeah, this one couldn't have been very good, right? On the top right. So, one, one thing that I will, I'll share with you just real quick, which is kind of interesting. When you're setting up, this is something I noticed even like just looking at a lot of video with drivers, is you get the idea. So if I am set up normally, like with an iron, I've noticed most, most good players, the hands are hanging slightly below the shoulders. If I did that with a driver, obviously the golf ball's up on the team. If you raise the driver, and I'll show this to my students a lot when they're hitting in the heel, raise the driver up, you can see now the ball is right in the neck. Everybody see that? So basically when it raises up, it goes from here to there. All right? Then you add a bit of out to it, all right, which we all want our students to do. Now the thing's going to here and wear the heel out. So I always try to get them to understand that I want their hands to hang out a little bit more. I like to see the, just, just sort of a checkpoint in the video. I like to see their hands hanging just below their eyes. Okay? The top of their hands below their eyes. Which for me allows for that club to swing out more. It also allows for a little bit of full radius extension with the arms that we tend to get with the drivers. So it gives them a little bit of leeway. Because you guys all know with technology now, where are they making the faces hot now? High and tough. So we want them to miss. We want them to miss more on this side. Ball, still, ball speed doesn't drop as much. You get, uh, still get pretty good distance. Plus, even if they're cutting across a little bit, they have a chance to hit a draw. All right, so let's just talk about some, some basic ideas of the order of change, right? This is what, I mean, if you guys are anybody on the Facebook forums, this question comes up all the time, which is absolutely driving me crazy. What do you fix first, right? Say somebody's slicing the ball. How many would fix the face first? Show of hands. How many would fix the path first? Come on. Jump out there. Yeah, you don't know, right? I mean, it, it depends, is what I would say. Right? Everybody's a little bit different. So, years ago, for me, I fixed the face first every single time. Did I help some folks? Sure, I did. I also created a lot of hooks, <laughs> okay, depending on the student and then how much the extreme of how much you're going to close that face, whether it's in the backswing or release or whatever you're trying to work on. So you've got to be careful not to just go one way or the other. I think um, now that you know, when I started learning more about ball flight, correct ball flight, and track man, I started fixing the path a lot more than I start fixing the face. But I'd say I do a little bit of both um, most of the time. So if somebody says I just fix the face every time first, I think that's just that's just <coughs> that's not good. 
always say pay attention to the start direction. Right? So if we know, just like we talked about with, the, with Mike Shanahan there, that ball was starting pretty straight, wasn't it? Club face is looking at the target. Okay? If I would have closed his club face more, he'd quit the game. He's gonna hit it, he's gonna hit it head high into the woods to the left. Probably get it off the ground at the top. Okay? So if I didn't fix that 15 degree left path, we're gonna be in big trouble. He's not gonna get a playable shot. So getting those two, the path and the face closer together is probably a better goal. Okay? And it's real easy to explain to him, hey, the closer, the fast, the, the face path relationship is, less curve you're gonna get. Alright? Straighten your golf balls on the fly. And you can adjust them a little bit, you know, closing the stance, open the stance, whatever you want to do. But getting those two together is really the main thing. So I, I would say if the ball starts straight to the left, I'm going to tend to fix path or fix the club path first. Most of the time. If I got a club face looking this way and he's swinging, you know, 10 degrees to the left and the face is 5 degrees to the right, I better make something, I better make a, a, a face change as well. So I've got to do a little bit of both. And I'll probably spend more time doing that. And I'll show you here in a couple minutes. I've got a, an example. So again, what's the, what's the shot pattern goal? That always is, is very important. You're trying to get a fake. Can you talk a little bit about where the line angle fits in all this? Because I know when Henry Griffith's company over 25 years ago when they yeah. started, they started messing with the line angle. Mm -hmm. They took a lot of big slicers and they could hit it straight. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it definitely affects it. I mean, um, I think if you're teaching, you're fitting a lot of times. You know, you're looking at it, and, and especially, I, I teach off of a mat a lot of times, so a lot of times I lose a little bit of that with uh, looking at the divots. But outside, if you're looking at the divots, you see toady divots, and you see a club path that's not, doesn't look like it's going that far to the left, then I'd throw in a lot more, for sure. Because you can definitely help somebody with, you know, tweaking the lie angle and, so getting the fit with the proper proper length. And that's also a good point, uh, Ed. Is is that's why I pay pay attention to a lot of uh, the swing plane. It measures swing plane and impact. And you'll see guys that have two upright golf clubs that will instinctively raise the handle just to make it feel good. Especially better players that haven't got the fit, they'll figure out how to make that ball go straight. So they're raising the handle or they're lowering the handle to kind of make it go where they want it to go. But I think, yeah, it's a, it's a good point. Um, fitting is fitting. A lot of times you have to you have to mix that in there and go, well, this ball looks like it should go be going in a different direction. Club fit, but the, the line is too flat or too upright. You can definitely address that. Yeah. Very, very important. Like I said, the, the fix may require a blend of both. You know, be careful. Um, yeah, I like that Emmanuel Del Torre, the other heard legend in the game, uh, teaching. Uh, I heard that quote a long time ago at one of the seminars. And be careful with your student, just like do what you ask them to do. <laughs> you try to get them, you know, to really exaggerate it. We'll talk about that here in a second. What I call quick changers and slow changers, I think is uh, it's important to know your student's ability to change. I'll tell you that. All right, so fixing the face. And again, this, this is where TrackMan is very, very helpful for me, is when they're doing their warm-up, and I'm watching the ball fly, and again, it, it hasn't changed my opinion of the golf swing, it just allows me to measure some things, is when I'm seeing that club path at pretty much zero, or this guy here hit 15 shots, and the worst club path is maybe minus two, okay, look at his club face, it's four degrees to the right, Okay, he's trying to figure out why the ball won't, won't go straight, the ball's going to the right every time. I'm going to address the face first. Go ahead and uh, run that for me. And I'll tell you what I did over here to, to make the change. So a pretty decent setup. This guy's a 16-17 this guy's a handicap. Good athlete. Creates a good amount of speed. And it's tough to see if you look at look at the left, look at impact there. I think I slow it down here. So look right there at the top. So you can see the club face wide open, as we would say. At, you know, the swing plane's not bad. Like I said, there's some things in there that I don't exactly like, but again, we're looking at how do we help the student the quickest here? That impact, that's pretty 
right? So look at Here's the other thing I put in his, what do you think his goal was? One, not to get to the right, okay? And number two, he's trying to get farther. Any question? No, Exactly, lower part. So this is where I like to look at dynamic loft, right? Look at that. This is an eight iron, it's 44 degrees. It's like a sand wedge. Okay? So he's turned an eight iron into a sand wedge because of the face being open, having to throw it early, and then obviously backing the handle up and scooping it up in the air. Alright, so what I did with him, let's see. The next slide. Yeah. So you know, how can we change the face? These are just simple simple things that we can that we can look at. You know, one obviously is the hole. Okay, so I looked at his grip. His grip was pretty pretty neutral and it was up in the palm. So all I did for him basically is I just got a little more in the fingers, turned the left hand over so it matched the right, a little bit stronger. His wrist set. Okay, so again wrist set you can have you know what we call an extension of the left of the lead wrist, a little flatter or flexion. Okay, flexed. So he was what? He's extended. Okay, that's why the toe is looking sort of hanging down there. And then forearm rotation. Okay, whether it's going back, internal or external rotation of the left forearm is going to affect the face. And then also internal or external rotation of the downswing is going to affect the face. Okay, a lot of people may call, it, may call that release. I don't like to use that word, but I'll say rotating properly into the, into the impact interval. So <clears throat> what I did for him is fix his grip a little bit, and then I moved him to where he felt like the club face was more shut, all the way to the top. So I wanted him feeling like the back of his lead hand was flattening or even slightly bowed. Again, just feeling to the top. And guess what he's going to do? He's going to hit a couple to the left. He hit a couple of what? Not as many as you would think. And then he started not throwing it quite as early. And you'll see, this is, this is kind of interesting, when you look at the after swing, all right, so we've done, we've done a little bit better. Look at the dynamic loft now. Remember what it was? 44, now it's 28. Think the ball's gonna go farther? Sure. Club path is even more to the right, okay? What did he do? If it affected his club path a little bit by changing his face, and his club face was actually slightly closed. So you can see at the top, it looks a lot better on video. Again, don't be caught up with what, exactly what it looks like, but you can see it's a lot more square. Okay, does impact look a lot better? Not a ton. Again, this is two or three swings later. But you look at that and you say, wow, I hate that impact position. This changed a ton. You can see the dynamic loft change and, and all the, the numbers change. So that's where video, a lot of times, can, you can go, wow, I don't know if I really changed it much, but you did. That makes sense? Everybody see that? So, you know, that's that's where this the track me is so helpful. Plus, obviously, it's all the ball before the ball actually start drawing, which is nice. Which is what his goal was.